<laughs> Not only in the cup. How you doing, right? Yeah, thank you. Oh, How are you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Oh. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's like he's a big, uh, big surprise to be fair if you were watching what? trainings and yeah. everything. So, especially forcing you to put him, you know. No, no, no. You will be, I mean, you know only 30% from the game, but if you were watching the sessions, you would pull like. Sorry, never use yet. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So broadcast, broadcast section first. The Jane is in a soft, and then we'll do a written scan. Thanks, mate. Good afternoon, Slav. Good afternoon. Uh, just start with some fitness news. Uh, Michael Antonio was just here a second ago. He looks fit. He's ready to go. Yeah, he's back. He's fit. He uh, he played last week when we played Man United on Sunday. He played for under 20 freeze on Friday. Uh, it was a plan, it was part of the plan, and he looked really good then. Like, he's in shape, he's been training with us for two and a half weeks now. As I said, he done 90 minutes on a big pitch in an official game, 420 freeze, then he joined us in training, back to us for the trainings, and he, he looks good and he looks, uh, he looks ready, of course. Then yesterday, uh, Sheiku Kuyate, and then the Carol, they started to train with us. So they done just a couple of trainings with us, and uh, that's basically it. We're gonna see with them, of course. They they had a, especially Andy. He had like a long layout, you know, for for since since I don't know since March or or that or April. And uh, Sheikh who had few weeks off, like he missed. Basically, it happened in the beginning of the preseason in our first training in Austria. So uh, that's two of them. And Manuel uh, Lanzini, he's he's joining us in training. He's training separately, individually, and he's joining us on Monday. So uh, we're gonna have a full squad back uh, for a Newcastle game. Still, for this game, we're gonna have 100% Mikey Antonio back. For the rest is. Uh, for Sheku and for Andy, it's a bit too early, I think. Uh, was there some harsh analysis after the defeat at Old Trafford? Or Not harsh analysis. It you're was. Not too it's still very well, uh, I said after the game, I had that feeling here in my stomach, and I still have a bit of it, you know. Uh, that 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 uh, you can't say okay, you can't say oh, it's Man United, or it's that, or that, yeah, but we should have done 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 a bit better. And uh, especially when it comes to last couple of minutes or last few minutes, you know, that uh, we didn't give up individually. We've done our best and all that, but it wasn't very smart and it wasn't like you don't have to, to, to like crumble and we crumble because it's not the same if you lose 2 nil and 4 nil, you know. So uh, we made analysis. Uh, I wanted to find the balance, of course, between criticizing and talking about what wasn't good, because obviously some of the things were not good enough. But on the other hand, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't, uh, you don't want to lose a bit of confidence because of one defeat. So it's uh, so we done that balance, and uh, we looked really good this week on training, and uh, we train today, and and tomorrow we have, of course, light session, yeah. and then. Uh, we want to approach the game against uh, Southampton in a very, very positive mood. Of course, knowing what what we have to do to get to get anything out of that game, because again, every game in a Premier League is very difficult. Uh, we are playing against a team that done really well, that is doing really well, and they are very consistent. Uh, no matter that they are changing the managers, but they are not changing the players a lot, they are not changing the way they are playing and all that, and they are doing really well. Uh, what's the latest on William Carvalho? Are you confident getting that done? I don't Will know, to be fair, I, I, I don't know, we're going to see what's, uh, what's happened there with, with ins and outs, you know, uh, like it's very busy, it's becoming even more busy in, in, uh, in other clubs, and so uh, also with us, but I, I left it to the board, I left it to the chairman. Mm. And with the people who are who are involved in in 
ins and outs, and then concentrate uh, only and totally on, on, on our game against Southampton. Karen Brady said that 17 of the 20 Premier League clubs would be in favour of the window closing early. Would you be in favour of closing early as well? Yes, I mean, it is, uh, it is, it, it is mutual from, from me and the club. We are on the same line, of course. Uh, just I, I would like that to happen. It would help everybody. Mm, but uh, for me, it has to be across the leagues because uh, otherwise, then there's no point. I mean, I mean, I, I don't know, but ironically, it would put the it it would put the clubs even in a worse situation that you would still lose some players if if the clubs from abroad want them, and you want to be able to replace them. You know, so if it's it would only pro it would only protect us in terms that no other Premier League clubs can take your players. But your let's say Coutinho situation or whoever that wouldn't stop Liverpool of losing him, but it would stop them of finding the replacement for him. So for me, it's great idea. I'm first one who is definitely yes, yes, because like this is like you are really you are starting the pre-season. With one team, you are finishing the pre-season with the other team, and then when it starts, uh, you go like some teams are, are like losing like 30% of the team or whatever. It's it's a new team, it's different, and uh, for me, it would be much better if you if you it doesn't have to be at the start of the pre-season, of course, but let's say Maybe before the first game of the season, it should be and definitely should be across Europe. This is giving the people around football a lot of time to speculate, to 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 like uh, think, to act, and all that. And uh, it's definitely the hardest for the managers and for the board. You mentioned the Coutinho situation, similar situation with Diego Costa as well. Without wishing to make a comment on those particular situations, do you have sympathy with? Jurgen Klopp, Antonio Conte, because you had something very similar last season with Dimitri Payet. When a player decides he doesn't want to play for the club anymore, what can you do? Of course, I have the sympathy, you know, for that. And that, what you asked me before, that would stop, at least when the season starts, it would stop those kind of moves that the manager. I mean, uh, you wanna you wanna have your team, but you wanna be concentrate only on the game on Saturday. And you are not because of those things. Uh, of course, I have uh, I have a sip. It's it's harder for them. And sometimes, sometimes you are on the other side of the story. You know what I mean. Sometimes you are in position that you are getting the player and all that. But but uh, but it definitely it doesn't help. Uh, it doesn't help the managers. The players have too much power now. Are they able to hold clubs to ransom? Yeah, but the main important. Uh, what is very, very important and what gives you strength as a manager and what also gives you strength uh, as a club is, and it weakens a little bit the strength from the, of the other side, is that you're on the same line with your board, that you're on the same line with the chairman and that 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 is very important because then you you personally, the manager, the chairman and the club uh, first of all, it's it's becoming uh, really, really powerful. So is you have to be on the same line. Has the balance yeah. gone too far now? Or is there anything that can happen in football to stop players? Ah, I don't know. You know, you know, you know better than me, or as you know, as much as I know that 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 the power is too too much on the mm -hmm. side of uh, the player and the the players and the agents. And it's hard for the managers, although sometimes you are, you know, you are in the other situation. And I was a few times in that situation, but what I, what, what, uh, I never recommend the player and I never suggest and I never ask from, from the player, because make no mistake, we are sometimes on this side, sometimes on the other side, but I never, ever advise or ask from the player to stop training, to stop the banana. That, that, that's low. That is low, to be fair. And it shouldn't be like that. Just. 
one, one real positive I thought out of last week was, was Declan Rice's performance. And as you know, this is a mm-hmm. club whereby it's <coughs> traditional and it's important that young players come through the academy and play for the first team. You must have been delighted with his. Look, we, we are never, although it's nice to have those kind of situations and it's like a bonus, let's say, and all that, we are never trying to force it. I did, did, well, I didn't go, okay, let's put him, you know, to, to gain some what, you know. Uh, but he uh, is a boy, uh, very matured for his age, very, very good for his age, very, he's thinking about the game, plus he's, he's, he's got the quality definitely, and he impressed everybody, the players, the staff, the, I don't know, West Ham family, you know, and me, of course, in the preseason, he played almost every game, okay, we played with the whole, 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 whole squad there, and he basically, he forced, uh, he wasn't in the plans from the beginning, let's be honest, you know, he was there very important because in the beginning you need players because you want the first few preseason games to be played two times 45 minutes and all that, but then you see he's doing well there, then next one he's playing, he's doing well there, he's doing well there. So, uh, I mean, it's too early for for the kid, uh, but uh, is he improving or is he doing really good? Yes, he is. And uh, definitely the reason, okay, we had some injuries. Some players, as you know, are coming back now or in two weeks' time, especially from that, from that area in midfield. But uh, he came on against Man United only because he was really, I was confident that he can do it like, like this, because he did it already in the last couple of months. He came on against against Burnley last eight minutes or five minutes, I don't know, and it wasn't like not not important game for us. It was very important game for us, and it was 2-1 for us, and Burnley was trying to equalize. We put him because he was the best option for us then. So Reese is... Uh, uh, still, it can go either way, you know, he is... But, so I don't want him... I don't want to praise him too much, you know. Despite I think that he and his family are totally down to earth and they're gonna be focused and stay focused, but still there's no no reason, no time and no and no uh, space to to make like now new new whatever out of him. He's still very beginning. He's still very low, you know. But is he doing well? Yes, he's doing well. Yes, he's doing well. Just one other from me, and um, it's not really West Ham related, but last season West Ham moved into a big new stadium and, and all the problems that, that you had regarding that, I'm talking about the football, on the football side. This weekend, Pochettino and Spurs move into a big stadium that isn't theirs. And what, what advice would you give them? Because many people are saying they may have the same sort of problems that West, in terms of playing, so I'm not talking about anything I'm just talking about, in terms of getting used to playing in a really big venue when you're not used to it. I don't know, we found it different, and it wasn't only us. It wasn't only us, it, it happened to few clubs or to most of the clubs who changed the stadium from going to one compact stadium to a big arena, as you know, and a lot of them have done it because uh, the new modern st- stadiums, they are multifunctional, you know, and you need that kind of space and everything. So I don't know uh, how will they react. Uh, but again, you know, there's no magic formula to go around that and to find a shorter way, I don't know, but uh, all I'm saying that last year, last year they were, they were, uh, I wouldn't say struggling, but they found it more difficult to play in a Champions League uh, than they, it wasn't that, that intensive, it's, it, it didn't look that great, let's say, because let's be honest, home in Premier League at White Hart Lane, they were very, very impressive in the Champions League. And it, all, and it wasn't always against top, 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 top clubs, you know. They, it was very hard them to, to close the opponent down and all that. 
so I don't know. I'm not too bothered, to be fair. <laughs> but no, but but uh, uh, they will need some time to to adjust. Although they already played few games at Wembley. Yeah. So, can I ask you about your, your new signing at Jabba? I know you conceded four goals, but what impact has he had on the dressing room since he's been here? John made a big impact. He's he's number one. England's goalkeeper, and uh, he's very vocal in a most positive way. He's very vocal in trainings also, in a game. And that's what you need, your goalkeeper, not to be only one, but to organize the defense, to shout and all that. Um, so we are very, very, ha very happy with him so far. So we have really two really good goalkeepers. And... Uh, yeah, it's good. Um, Andy Carroll, you said, is back in training. He's constantly suffering from injury problems. Is there anything he's trying to do in his World Cup at the end of the season? Is he trying anything different to stay fit throughout the season? Oh, look, uh, yeah, we, we tried even before we tried, or we were trying, but it didn't happen uh, now. Us as a club and him personally, it would be wrong to think about the World Cup. We all should think about next 10 10 games or a few months and then hopefully if it's good then we can build on that. Unfortunately so far with such a long layout uh, you can't you, you can't think and plan that 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 long term you know what I mean. So but our aim our aim we we, we are trying to to find a solution that's going to make him long term fit and all that. But for that, you need you need him to start playing games. We don't want to rush him now in a game against Southampton, no matter how much. Uh, sometimes he's very, you know, that he's got, not sometimes, always he's got a great impact on the pitch. On the pitch, but, but we don't want to go into the situation like that after a few days of training, he, he plays for us. Maybe in that game he would be great. Maybe in that game he would scored the goal or whatever, but so far that kind of the approach have have caused like uh, new injuries for himself. So of course we wanna we don't want to drag it too long, but but uh, he has to do a, at least kind of a short preseason, you know, before he he enters the pitch, and o only in that way. He, uh, we can maintain, he, or he can maintain to be, to stay fit. And then, if that comes, he can think about those things that that you mentioned in the beginning. Um, if Philip Coutinho does leave for Barcelona, are you worried that Liverpool will come for Lanzini? Has that crossed your mind at all? Uh, no. Well, well, I uh, I got it from the papers and all that. Max, Max. Uh, <laughs> Because those stories, he, he emails me straight away, so to make me a little bit, to to, to shake me a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, no, I said it last week, we spoke about that uh, before Man United game, I think. Uh, uh, I speak to Manu every day, you know, that he is very happy. He, he, he really feels it. Uh, he feels it at home here. He feels wanted. He feels like uh, you know. You you can feel it. You can see it. You don't have to talk to the players, but especially if you talk to him, you see how he's smiling here. How he's happy. He broke into a national team of Argentina, despite he was injured or he's still out. He he's got a call from call up for 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 uh, September games so he knows if if I'm playing here for West Ham that time I, if I have a good season for West Ham I have a chance to improve to sign a better contract with West Ham and and to play for Argentina so he's very happy here and you don't want to set a price tag on him if Liverpool do get 100 million for Coutinho what would it cost no 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 I I'm sure he's going to stay with us I'm sure he's going to stay with us. Time and he felt like, the, you know, <laughs> <laughs> when, 
What do you say, Max? I want <laughs> some believer. No, no. He know that he's wanted. You know, as I said, the chairman and the board. We we. He was on loan, and we took an option even before 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 we had to. We activated it. He was voted the Players' Player of the Year, which is also, you know, it's a, it's a good thing. It makes you feel really wanted at the place. He likes it here. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Camera's up. <laughs> <laughs>